Hi guys, my name is Chloe, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in October. So October was a really quiet reading month for me, I really didn't get that much reading done at all. I completely blame Overwatch 2 for launching and also quite a lot of the video games that I play had Halloween events running and their limited time so I wanted to spend as much of my free time as I could completing those and getting those limited items because I am quite a collector. So yeah, I only have four books uh, to share with you today, the ones I read in October. I also made good progress on another two but I didn't finish them um, so I will be covering those in my November wrap up when we get to that later on. Yeah, it's nearly the end of the year. Wow. So the first book that I read in October was called Of Visions and Secrets and this was by Catherine Ann Kingsley, one of my favourite authors um, who does dark romance. This is her latest um, series uh, that's out and completed. It's a trilogy and in this one we follow Emma and her brother has gone missing and she wants to track him down but the only person that has answers is his uh, teacher or professor uh, Raphael and yeah she ends up looking into this mystery of what happened to her brother and she's just drawn to this guy and the dark world that he's part of full of like cults and shadow monsters and stuff like that and yeah I had a really good time with this book I gave it four stars I didn't find it as compelling as her other works that I've read by her so Harrow Fair, uh, Julian Strand um, I think those are the only ones I've read so far so yeah, it just wasn't quite as compelling as some of those um, and I just didn't grip with the romance as much as those other pairings which is one of the reasons why this didn't get five stars. I really did like the, um, I say light thriller elements, not light because it is quite a dark book but it's not all about um, this mystery and working out what's happened to her brother but it is present up there alongside the romance, it's quite prominent in, as part of the plot. So that was really good and that kept me intrigued and there was also this other there was also this other character called Gigi and she's really fun um she's a queer character in the book so I think she's bisexual either bisexual or lesbian I couldn't quite remember uh but yeah she's a lot of fun and she has some fun interactions with our main character and yeah overall it's a really good time and I'm intrigued to see where the um, series goes because there wasn't really much wrapped up in book one so there's a lot of questions that I want answered in the remaining books so yeah that was the first one and that one yeah I read uh, it was an ebook that I read. The second book that I finished in October was Tide of Terror by Justin Somper. This is the second book in the Vampire series and in this one we follow the Tempest twins as they attend Pirate Academy which was really interesting and different um, to the previous book so far so that was fun but yeah um, I can't really say too much more than this because it's a sequel but we are following Grace and Connor Tempest who um, set sail from their hometown because their parents died and they didn't want to become orphans and adopted well they were orphans and they didn't want to be adopted by the other villagers because they weren't very nice so they set off on an adventure on a boat um, but unfortunately a storm destroyed the ship uh, Connor ended up on a pirate ship and Grace ended up on board with the vampires. and yeah the story just picks off from there. I've been having a really good time reading this series so far, it's so nostalgic for me and it's just good fun. Yeah we got to see some more of the magic elements in this book which was quite interesting. There was a way of communication going on between Grace and the vampire ship which was really interesting to read about and I loved that we got to see more of the vampire characters again even if they were um, only in it a little bit so yeah that's why this one didn't get five stars I gave it four stars again just because all of my favorite characters are the vampires and they just weren't present as much as I wanted them to but this book has set it up quite nicely so I'm hoping that they will make more of an appearance in book three fingers crossed so the next book that I read in October was one of my most anticipated books of the year actually and this was um, Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood, the author who wrote The Love Hypothesis which was one of my favourite books of last year. Um, and yeah this one is really good, so this one this time was an enemies to lovers romance um, following B and Levi as they have to collaborate on a project for NASA. And yeah it was just really interesting it was really good i loved the story i loved the side characters 
I just didn't like their romance and B and Levi as much as I did Olive and Adam in the first book. I just liked their dynamic a lot more. Um, so that's why this one is going to get four stars and not a five again. Um, I just didn't love it as much as I did with The Love Hypothesis. It's still really great and I'm definitely going to read this one again at some point. Um, but yeah, I did like a B, I think, had a bit more of a personality in this book compared to Olive, which was one thing that I really liked. And yeah, this one really highlights again um, some of the misogyny that is present in the um, STEM environment again, which is really important. And I'm glad like the author raises that because it's something that still needs to be sorted. So that was really good. Um, but yeah, overall, I just think not as great as The Love Hypothesis. And that's probably one of the only reasons why this isn't getting five stars is because I love that book so much and it's not as good so it has to have a four um but yeah super excited to read her next one I think it comes out next year um so I'll be looking forward to reading that one as well and the final book that I read in October yep this is definitely going to be my shortest wrap-up of the year so far but yeah this one I'm so glad that I finally read um I've been trying to get this one read for a while now and I just haven't but now I've done it and yeah this one was Dracula by Bram Stoker which I've now read yay and yeah this one well I think most people know what Dracula is about but in this one we follow Jonathan Harker who's a solicitor and he's been sent to Transylvania to help his new client buy property in London and move to London uh, but his new client is Dracula the vampire and he doesn't want to let him leave and bad stuff happens and then back at home we're following Mina who I think is either his fiance or his wife I can't quite remember um and she's concerned for Jonathan because she hasn't heard from him but also concerned about her friend Lucy because she's becoming paler and paler as the days pass and something is amiss there and not quite right and yeah that's basically the premise of Dracula um overall I enjoyed it I gave it 3.5 stars and it was better than I was expecting, considering last time I only got like a third or so in and put it down and never got back to it. Um, I definitely think the first half of this book is a lot stronger. Um, so this book is told in diary entries from the main characters. And at the start, we get Jonathan's diaries as he's at Dracula's castle. And that, I think, was the best part of the book. The atmosphere was really strong. It was really creepy. I was super intrigued. Uh, but then as it sort of got midway later on when we were following all of the characters I kind of just got a bit bored and I think that's just because it was too long for me this book um well my edition is like 400 460 pages and I'm not a massive fan of classics I do find them more boring than other works so that might just be a me thing but I got bored when later on in the book they were just tracking down boxes of dirt and it was just like it took them so long to do and we didn't need that many pages to cover that. That was just something that really annoyed me and just bored me really. And another thing that I didn't like about this book was just how dramatic it was, especially in the final half, especially when we were following some of Mina's entries. They were just dramatic and over the top and I know that's because it's a work of its time, it's a classic, that's how people talked and spoke back then. But it just really annoyed me and grated on me. Um, it's kind of like me, I'm a massive fan of Doctor Who, I love the show, but if I go back and try and watch like the classic Who, I just can't because it's so over the top and everything's awful and that's just because it was a work of its time, it was good then. But because I'm looking back on it now, I just don't enjoy it as much. Um, so it's kind of like that, if that makes any sense. But yeah, overall, I'm glad I've finally read this one. I don't know if I will ever reread this one, to be honest, because I definitely enjoy every other retelling and ad adaptation that I've consumed so far uh, that features Dracula a lot more than I did reading this book, but we'll see, who knows. Um, I also own the sequel that I think one of Bram Stoker's great 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 nephews or whatever wrote so I might give that one a, an attempt but I'm not going to promise anything and it probably won't be next year because this one took me three or four years to get to so yeah we'll see but yeah that was it that was a nice short speedy wrap up those were all the books that I read in October let me know down below if you've read any of these and what did you think or let me know what your favourite book that you read in October was. I'd love to know, especially since uh, it was spooky month and I'm always looking for spooky recommendations. 
so yeah that was it i hope you are enjoying your current read and i will see you in the next one bye Thank you.